What's up guys? Welcome back. A little perfume unboxing here. We have Fresh Life. They were out of it when I ordered it at the Sephora sale, but I could not take no for an answer. <coughs> oh boy. Oh my lord in heaven. <sighs> Zero out of 10 on flavor. Okay, hi, yes, a fresh installment of This or That. This or That is my very cleverly named series where I help you guys decide between two or sometimes more products that are very, very similar in their idea or their use case, and you're trying to kind of understand which one would be better for you, or maybe neither of them. Went on my Instagram, like I always do, and I asked you guys, I said, hey, it's time for another this or that. What products are you having trouble deciding between? And every single time you guys impress me so much. I cannot believe how perceptive you guys are. The products that you choose to have me compare, I'm like, those are really similar and I didn't even think about that. And it's just because I'm constantly awash in new things. And that's why I love this concept of video. It's like a response in the conversation, like a, a big crowdsourced response as to like what I haven't been perfectly clear on and where we can fill in the gaps. But I have a whole bunch of products I pulled and we're going to swatch them and really, really like deep dive on the textures, the use cases, who they're for, things like that, and help you guys understand not just, you know, the differences between all the products, but also the ones that I would choose if you just want my opinion. So let's go ahead and jump in. It's humid. My baby hairs are going ee, like literally. Also, um, this guy's still for sale. This one's sold, but this guy's still for sale. Follow my art Instagram. I am painting up a storm, so yeah. Anyway, the first one that I'm just seeing here, <laughs> it's not really in any particular order, Coral Eyeshadow, Pat McGrath Utopian Dream Shockwave versus Aether Desert Sunset. So the beauty of both of these palettes is that they are surrounded by ideas that help you employ that shade, right? So there is this coral right here that I think that she said was called Shockwave. And then there is this coral one that's called Desert Coral. And this one is going to, the Utopian Dream is going to, you know, lead you in directions that are going to change a little bit more texturally around that color. And then this one, I love this palette so much, I love both of these so much, is going to give you these like duochrome shifting glitters that all have either a pink base or a pink shift that help you bridge towards those, you know, more neutral outer shades. That said, they are so stinking similar. <laughs> okay, so like I have to be careful of which one is which here. Okay, so this right here is the Desert Coral from the Aether palette and that's Utopian Dream. As far as actual punch on the skin, Utopian Dream is going to be easier to build and get that full saturation with. And Aether, I mean, both of these, of course, are gonna blend really beautifully. And so as you see, like when I go to blend Aether, it does blend a little bit away and not like it's falling out. It's just like those are meant to be more blendable shadows. Whereas I do feel like Utopian Dream, if what you're after is that bold coral, the Utopian Dream, the Pat McGrath matte formula is going to give you more of that like super saturated, like paint kind of punch. So, I would bear that in mind and I would also, I mean, I'm not sure how much the nuance of the difference of the colors really matters to you. The Aether one has a touch more peach to it and Utopian Dream is a little bit more towards like hot pink, right? I don't think that I would be able to tell them apart in a lineup necessarily, you know, if you just kind of caught me off guard. They're very, very similar in shade, but I also, especially when you're talking about like money spent and everything that you'd be getting with it, think critically about whether you want a glitter and this is definitely like a personal preference thing, like a shimmer that looks like those. Very, very wearable, beautiful, blendable, goldy, pinky, deserty kind of duochromes. And this one also has, you know, some really beautiful duochromes, but the glitters are, I think the selling point really of the Utopian Dream palette. There's just, there's, it, it packs a lot of excitement. So like those are some of the marquee shades to me in that Utopian Dream palette. Like 
this is going to just blow your mind no matter what. Both of these are these like incredible like flaky glitters. This one is too, but it's it doesn't shift really. It's just a pure gold. And then this one, I, I when I open the palette, it's like I'm magnetized towards this color. I can't stop using it. It's this like oil slick that shifts pink. So they're totally different moods. And I hope that that helped to illuminate that. And as far as the formulas are concerned, Aether is always going to be a slightly more sheer formula. Like you're probably gonna need a primer to build it a little bit, whereas the Pat McGrath palettes across the board are more artist oriented. They're just more like bold and saturated. Wow, 10 minutes in and we've done one comparison. Yikes, okay. Purple eyeshadow, Kaja Rosewater, sorry, Kaja Rosewater versus Wayne Goss Tourmaline. This is another one that blew my mind, you guys. Tourmaline is a surprising palette because you think it's going to be really, really, or at least I thought it was gonna be really, really like saturated and deep and intense and it's not. They're very, very sheer washes of these kinds of like plummy purples. And then Kaja Rosewater, which is not what I have on my eyes today. Actually, I have Orange Blossom, as you might expect. I have to pee and it's making me like disjointed. Okay, I went to the bathroom, I found Rosewater. All is a lot better with the world now. So here is Kaja Rosewater, and I was pleasantly surprised to find that this shade right here is actually an extremely gorgeous, very like mucky, kind of plummy purple instead of being what I thought it was gonna be, which is almost like a, you know, a violet pink. That shade looks like this. And then there are two plummy purple shades in the tourmaline palette, and they look like this. Very, very similar families of colors, but you can see that the Kaja has a lot of shimmer to it. So it's like if you want a one and done, that when it does spread out, you start to get that really beautiful, same lighter burgundy plummy shade there. You get to see that like right here. Then the Kaja might be the one for you, especially because you get those other two shades in there that are kind of wicked and weird, right? What? What did I just say? Wicked weird? Like, wicka wicka woo? <laughs> that is not what I meant to say. I think I meant heckin'? So you, it's hard to see, but this actually does have a tiny like little blue shift to it. You can see it in another, in the other video where I used it. And then the tourmaline palette just kind of takes it in a completely different direction because you go, with, you know, this beautiful like iridescent but translucent gold celestial that this is all based on like old Hollywood, right? And so it's a very, very like simple and straightforward, beautiful, like rich bronzy gold. And then you have another kind of really pretty bronzy shade there. A nice shimmery pink. And these are all a little more in like the sheer territory. They don't have that totally like glitzy rock and roll looking kind of texture that the Kaja does. So other than the ones that I swatched just now, there's just this chocolate brown that's also really beautiful, but it's just a matte. And tourmaline is meant to me to build in thin layers. It's meant to be sheared out and to be really, really like subtle and glamorous and gorgeous. Whereas I think that each of the pans of the Kaja is essentially meant to be a showstopper. So like I said, I am wearing Orange Blossom today. I'm wearing both the middle shade that does like a pink shift gold kind of thing. It's like an apricot -y color when it gets on. And then I just used the brown one, just a little bit up here, but they are all kind of like in and of themselves main character energy, whereas I feel like this is only a complete idea insofar as the palette itself. Does that make sense? Bronzer, blush sticks, M Cosmetics, or Makeup by Mario. I have touched on this before, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and swatch the bronzers. The main thing to call out here is when you're talking about the difference between Makeup by Mario and M Cosmetics is that Makeup by Mario is going to be very creamy. This is light. And while the M Cosmetics is in a cream format, it is a little bit more of like a satin cream to powder hybrid. 
And that's really the biggest difference. I don't think that, I mean, I should have started this by saying, you can't go wrong. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to be upset either way. It's kind of more about like finding, you know, if you think that a more beige shade might work for you, then go for the M Cosmetics. If you think something a little bit peachier would work for you better, then go for the Makeup by Mario. And that's just the shades that I wear. But they're so, they're so gorgeous. And I tend to actually gravitate more towards the Makeup by Mario because it's slightly lower pigment. And so it's a little bit easier to get the right amount on my skin that all of the M Cosmetics products, I feel like, are quite saturated regardless of the like skin tone match and things like that. And so um, some people see that as a money's worth thing. You know, you're getting more for your money if you're willing to kind of use less and spread it out. The Makeup by Mario is such a generous amount of product for the money. I don't really think that it's a big deal one way or the other. And um, I prefer the Makeup by Mario. It's the one that I reach for the more just because it's reach for the most because it is easier to use. But, but, if I can complicate the situation one step further. This is kind of all the way to the end of the spectrum on something being so cream to powder that it almost doesn't even feel like a cream when, when you put it on the skin. And that's the Rare Beauty, the Warm Wishes. And I have this in Power Boost. You can see these are all extremely comparable shades. And if I had to pick a favorite, like if I were going to repurchase them, I think this is the more high-tech, unique product is the Rare Beauty. Wow, look at how the natural light hits that eyeshadow. Oh, it's so pretty. In Beauty Face Glaze or Milk Bionic Highlighter. That's a tough one. Now, I should start by saying these two things serve different purposes, right? The In Beauty Face Glaze describes itself as unique gel cream that promotes healthy skin barrier while imparting a soft focus glow where alone for a dewy glow as a primer, mix with foundation or a tinted moisture and or as a highlight for subtle radiance. Whereas the milk makeup says nothing. It doesn't say anything because milk doesn't think that we need descriptions for things, but let me swatch them. So the In Beauty Face Glaze comes in one shade and it is like this universal kind of translucent pearl. And the milk comes in two shades. I believe this is virtual. And then the other one is called reality. And the main difference here is the finish of the dry down. So when you're talking about the In Beauty, you're talking about something that does not really have a dry down, has more of a soak in because it's almost mainly a skincare product. The milk is a cosmetic product to me. I'm sure that it has, you know, some, some nice benefits to it and things like that, but this is the Milk Makeup one and that is gonna dry down and look like that. This is probably going to dry down and yes, it's going to leave you with some really beautiful like serum -y things to it, but eventually you will just probably have like the pigment left behind, whereas this, the, the Milk leaves this like glycerin dry down. It actually levels and smooths stays shiny even when it stops being tacky anymore. And that's what all the bionic stuff does. The blush, the bronzer, and the glow is, <laughs> they go on like a cream product and then they actually like dry down almost all the way and they stay looking like they're wet. And that is why I would pick the milk. Who knew that that would work? What? We are learning so many things today. I put the wrong lid on there and the In Beauty Face Glaze fits on the milk makeup tube. What do you know? <laughs> anyway. Oh, headbands, they really start to grind into your head. Are MAC Face and Body in Charlotte Tilbury beautiful skin at all similar? And if so, which one? I love that, I love it. So, they are similar. I have, you know, tried both of these quite a bit. And while I think that they are both lovely and you wouldn't be mad at either one, Charlotte's beautiful skin does have a little bit more of a satin finish to it. It's not, I mean, it's, it's still radiant, but it's not like dewy. Whereas I get the most flawless, beautiful, like, again, smoothed glycerin-y looking kind of finish from the face and body. And when you take the face and body and you keep working it on the skin, it grips. Some people say that you're actually supposed to like work it in your hand before you even put it on and then it'll grip. But I just do it on my face, it's not a big deal. And so I like the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin, but I don't feel like it's hydrating enough 
for my skin. I, I need the hydration through the day. And I, the MAC Face and Body, it has just never complained on me. And it's so beautifully long wearing. It like smooths all this weird texture out on my chin and stuff. I just look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I look great. It's not my best shade match. I have N1 and apparently there are more shades in this than I saw at the store. And so I think I probably could adjust this a little bit, but I still would pick, I would pick the Mac. It's just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It doesn't boast any kind of skincare ingredients and hers probably does. Regardless performance across the board, Mac face and body. And I'm so glad that you guys like told me to go out and buy it. <laughs> you were right, as usual. This weather makes my hair like ever since I was a kid, it's always done this. It's like just the little bit of humidity in the air makes my hair just kind of like go in these little clumps, makes it look like dirty and sad and flat. So I'm trying to distract you with all of my smoke and mirrors in the form of fruit. Beauty Pie Gold or Mario Nude 2 eyeshadow quads. Now, I don't have Nude 2, I have Nude 1, but I can speak to the formula. If you are considering a very, very like useful everyday universal on you. You know what I mean? Like uh, you get any, any eye look out of it. All the colors look like they blend really beautifully and, and beautifully in with your skin. I would definitely say, you know, go for Makeup by Mario. Obviously, like I said, I have number one, not number two. Number two is probably more comparable, but these are very, very, very different formulas. I have different moods for different days, okay? So Makeup by Mario is more subtle, it's more blendable, and it has this really, really lovely, like, grip on the skin when you put it on where it's like, you're kind of blending it, blending it, and then you feel it sort of lock on, and it's beautifully long wearing. But like, look how subtle and consistent those shades are. I would compare it to a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow. That's, that's what it feels like to me. It's not super, super highly pigmented. It is really, really beautifully blendable and it's very easy to apply. Let's put it that way. Like it's very easy to get a nice even wash and they, they blend really beautifully together without blending away. Beauty Pie by James Malloy. This, I, I said it once, I'll say it again. I compare this the most, especially the like non-matte shades to the Byredo formula. This is not for the faint of heart. That doesn't mean it's difficult to use. I'm just saying if you're looking for a, if you're looking for a sheer wash of color, your decision is made. Go with the Makeup by Mario because these are not sheer washes of color. These are like swatchable, velvety, crazy, crazy high intensity shimmers. Like they're just, they feel like, emollient when you touch them, like your finger sinks into them. They lose that texture almost immediately. Also, these colors are weird in a good way. They're not a typical nude palette like you would think of. You know, it's not like everything kind of stays in these like muted tones that are just going to blend right into your skin if you buy the one that's the closest to your skin tone. Like, first of all, this one that just looks like a pearl actually shifts kind of like an ethereal green. That brown has a little bit of something rosy to it, but I mean, it's it's incredible. It looks a lot like the one from Kaja. Yeah, Kaja is basically, it's like the same brown from Kaja, except the Kaja is glittery, whereas this is uh, like a foil. And then you have these mattes from James Malloy that I barely dip my finger into. They're very, very intense also. But the main thing with these is that the, the colors like don't go, like this is a little bit green. Do you see that? It's like more of an olive toned khaki. And then this is a really, really like peachy kind of beige, right? So like on my skin, those colors make sense because my skin actually likes green. It sort of neutralizes green, unless, you know, that shift is still gonna go green. But like the green in that khaki color, like my skin kind of tends to neutralize that and it just looks like a nice, warm, whatever. And if you're kind of complected like me, totally, you know what I mean, run with that. But if you don't wear things well that have like a little touch, like if your skin tends to go kind of sallow green when you don't want it to, I would skip this palette because those colors, they just do. That's the, that's what they kind of have in, in, in their root, right? It's just a little bit of green. Mainly though, I would say it's the formulas. Like if you're, if you're totally like 
on the fence and you're like, I like both color stories, if you like a really subtle blendable wash of color that you can build, but you're not gonna get anything like crazy show stopping out of Go Makeup by Mario. If you're looking for show stopping, swashable, velvety, luxurious feeling eyeshadows, then go with the Beauty Pie. Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue or Tower 28 Sunny Days. That is, oh, it's just, it's the like the reason I don't talk about the Tower 28 Sunny Days very often is because it's so good it, there's not really that much to say about it. It just kind of does what it came to do and doesn't complain. It, didn't, it doesn't come to the table with anything incredibly special. It just works really well. It's super thin. It, it's really pretty. It's hydrating. It's like medium low coverage. Like it's just a really, really pretty skin tint, you know? And then the Complexion Rescue, one of the main things you'll notice here is kind of this more of like a whipped look to it right when you get it out of the container because it, it is it just has this funky kind of whipped consistency to it and it's it's a little light for me so this is I think uh pearl is the shade opal sorry opal but yeah it's it's more about coverage I think it's nuanced but I think that the complexion rescue is going to give you a little bit more blur and a little bit less coverage and the Tower 20 is gonna give you a little more coverage, but it's gonna be a little bit like juicier looking. And that is the best I can do because they are both mineral sunscreens and they're both absolutely gorgeous. And I dread getting questions like that because I'm like, oh God, I'm either gonna find something concise to say or I'm gonna talk myself in circles for 10 minutes and it's gonna be an absolute mess to edit. So oh, I had to stop myself. <laughs> okay, this is a quick one, Mac Fix Plus or Milk Hydro Grip. And by Hydro Grip, I mean Hydro Spray. She wrote Hydro Spray. They are kind of similar, at least in their claims, but I would definitely go with the MAC. It, okay, it leaves the beautiful glycerin-y finish that I really, really like on my skin no matter what I have on my face. It could be no powder at all. It could be powder till the cows come home. And I spray it with enough MAC Fix Plus and it looks like this like glassy finish, right? The milk is, it's pretty, but it's not as hydrating as I want it to be. And it's not as glassy as I want it to be. It's just a little bit thinner of a product. And I can see my pores when I use it. Whereas this kind of blurs and makes me look like I don't have pores. So I like the MAC Fix Plus. Forever and ever, I'm in. Liquid bronzer, Milk, or Daniel Sandler, or Glossier. So I did declutter the Glossier, if that lets you know how I felt. They were a little too thin for my taste and a little bit too shimmery. Like it just kind of did, like they looked good when I applied them, concentrating really hard on making them look good, but they didn't cooperate very well with other things. It was like if I put powder on top of them, they were finicky or like certain foundations, they would just pick it up. Like it just, it was just not ideal. And it didn't have really enough pigment to me to like warrant the whole process of like putting it on the back of my hand and then putting it back up with a brush and then spreading it back out. Like some products are worth it to me and some aren't and I just stopped reaching for those. So I also feel like even though the shades were like well informed from the standpoint of being a pretty like wide range, I didn't have a particularly great match. Like the lightest shade was a little orange. So I do have the Daniel Sandler and the Daniel Sandler and the, the Milk. So we have the Bionic Bronzer here. This is in the shade Time Travel. This was my first experience with the whole Bionic line. I just bought this because it was new and it made me mad because I was like, that should not, has no right. That has no right to be as pretty as it is, okay? Oh, Bobby dear. He needs a nap. My mother-in-law has him, poor guy. He's been cranky, 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 cranky. He's got an ingrown toenail. He's got, he's got like five teeth cutting through. He just having a time. Okay, and then we have the Daniel Sandler here. This is the Sun Glow. The only thing about this is I am not sure that you can buy this on its own. I got it in a little set, but you might be in the UK and that might be easier. So they're extremely different. So the milk, like when you spread this 
all the way out, you get something that kind of looks a lot like, you know, Makeup by Mario or something like that, but it's a little bit more of like a serum consistency and it does still leave that nice glycerin-y finish on the skin. Less so than the blush and the glow, but still it does a really good job of like leveling. And then the Daniel Sandler is literal watercolor. It's literal liquid. And so when you put that on the skin, it's like a, it's like a much, much, much more concentrated version of like that Aether body oil. But it does dry down. It doesn't just stay oily. It goes to like this beautiful satin powder finish, but it's so subtle. Like you can put it on your body. It's super, super, super subtle. So if you're going for something really subtle and shimmery and kind of like better than real life, I would go with the Daniel Sandler. And if you're going for something that's like, you know what I mean? You want to change the local color on your skin and still have that really nice kind of glittery, glittery, glycerin-y, bouncy kind of texture on the skin, go with the milk. It's getting dark outside. I think it's gonna storm. My kid's not gonna fall asleep. I hate to break it to you. Bare Minerals or Bobbi Brown's Concealer stick, another fantastic question. So we have here the Bobbi Brown Skin Concealer Stick in Warm Ivory. And then I have the Bear Pro from Bare Minerals in Fair Cool 01. While I really enjoy both of these, here's the Bare Minerals, here is the Bobbi Brown. And I have to mention the Bobbi Brown has a an absolute dog butt shade range. It's almost like 90% white. So I always mention that when I talk about it but it is a lot slippier and it's a little lower coverage. But I do find that that makes it really easy to blend in. Whereas the Bare Minerals Bare Pro is gonna be higher coverage, it's creamier and a little bit more dry, but it's like, it's just more coverage and less slippy by a lot. It's just, it's a lot creamier. Okay, Violette FR Eye Paints versus About Face. <laughs> I feel like this is a troll question. <laughs> Y'all, if you've watched my like only video on the Violette FR Eye Paints, yeah, yeah, paints, they were a struggle. And you know what, someone asked me this and they're not punking me because they asked before my video on these had come out. If you've watched the video on About Face, you know that I think that these are really, really great. They're very easy to work with. The application of them, like the practical use case of them is a lot more intuitive than, well, than most kind of liquid eyeshadows that I've used and they're very painterly, but you can really blend them at the edges and everything and get something very beautiful, very wearable, but also a lot of pop. And it was just not something that I could achieve with the Violet eyeshadows. They just were very, very frustrating. She described them herself as kind of like a matte liquid lipstick for the eyes. The main thing that I found to be super frustrating about them was that they had so much pigment. And so it was like you had to put the tiniest dot on and then you still, you, you kind of found yourself in a situation where you're like, what do I do with all this product? Where do I put it? Where am I blending it to? Whereas like this had this really, really pleasant, lovely dry down, whereas like you could manipulate it, you could build it, you could feather it at the edges. Another thing that the Violette formula just didn't want to do, it just didn't want to feather, it kind of wanted to just gap up. And this is just totally agreeable. And they're very, very affordable. Danessa Myrick's Infinite Chrome Flakes versus the Color Fix Foils. So unfortunately, I cannot swatch the Infinite Chrome Flakes for you because they all dried up which is a very, very good thing to tell you, I guess. It's good feedback for the brand too, is that that packaging is not ideal. It does not keep air out for some reason. And they all just went and like sucked into the sides and like some of them I couldn't even open. But I did pull the hollow grave flaky glitters so that you can at least see what the texture looks like and I'll apply it on top of like an eye primer. And then I pulled a couple of other things to compare it to. Okay, so the eye primer was not the most ideal thing to apply it on top of because I used the Urban Decay Primer Potion and it's a little bit matte. And so it kind of, uh, it killed the flakies. It makes me sad. Can I scratch it off the top? No, apparently not. Anyway, so that's the hollow grave, but that's kind of the idea of the flakies. And then this is the, you know, color fix foil in Milky Way. But if the color fix foil is not exciting enough for you, it's not enough duochrome or however many chromes, multi of the chromes, and the flakies are 
underwhelming for you because of the packaging issue or maybe use case, like how hard they are to kind of manipulate sometimes, I present to you the happy medium. This is the Janessa Myrix Twin Flames. This happens to be in Lust. I also have one called Crazy For You. I have, I don't know, I have a few of these that have like the clear backing to them. I don't love the colored ones, the ones that, you know, are actually like a, like a green cream shadow or liquid shadow or whatever. I prefer the ones that are on a clear backing that just kind of behave like a topper. But like, it's basically a happy medium between something that has this texture to it, but has this level of like multi-chrome reflection, reflection to it. So, and I did see, I keep saying that they only have them on her website. I did see that Sephora is now carrying all of them. So they do have the ones with all the clear backing on them too. So, yep, we love to see it. So that's what I would pick, but hopefully that helps to illuminate the differences. And now I get to try and remove this from my hand because her stuff is like wear all day. Did you know, did you know that you can use brush bath from It Cosmetics for Ulta to remove oil pastel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I probably could also use turpentine or something, but yeah, I really, really like hated something I put on a painting the other day and <laughs> I was in oil pastel and I was like, what am I going to do? And then I was like, well, I wonder if like a, a brush cleaner would help, you know? Ta-da, my hand is still sparkly because Danessa Myricks is, oh, in, in Hannah's words, tenacious. <laughs> okay, so Salt New York Sneaky Balm or Kierweiss Cream Foundation or Danessa Myricks Balm Powder. And I would be in a position right now to be like, well, I don't know about the balm powder in a pigment or whatever, because I only got the other uh, universal unpigmented shade, except <laughs> dun 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 dun, I just got this. <laughs> This is in the shade one. This is the yummy skin from Janessa Myricks and I'm wearing it today. So I've been wearing it for a few hours and let me talk about skin type here. First of all, I do want to take Kierweiss off the table unless what you really want is something that's like very skincare oriented. The other two are not particularly skincare oriented. That's kind of what you're paying for with Kierweiss and honestly like the name, but it's so precious. It's so precious. And it's not a really great shade range, I don't think. I'm not, I can't really remember. I haven't used it in a long time. It's a little bit finicky and I don't, I don't know, it's pretty but it, I don't think it's worth the money as much as like their blushes are worth the money. Their blushes are incredibly special. But between the Salt New York Sneaky Balm and the Janessa Myricks Balm Powder, if you're putting it all over your whole face, Sneaky Balm is for people who need hydration and the Janessa Myricks is for people who need a little bit more satin mattification. I just, I'm not, I don't have powder on other than like a powder bronzer, but like I don't totally love the powder finish that I'm getting from this. It is a balm powder. And someone asked me if it would compare to the um, Chantecai Future Skin Cushion, not on me. The appearance might be similar, but the wear is not similar at all. The Chantecai is kind of self-refreshing. That's what I'm looking for. The way that it kind of warms to your skin, but it's, it keeps its integrity. This to me is, it's like breaking up around like my dry spots. And I feel like it's very, I mean, it's super pretty, honestly. Like it's very, very pretty and I will continue using it. But for my like hydration, like for my more hydrated day needs, especially if I'm gonna wear a very lightweight complexion look, and then work on top of it with more creams. I'm gonna go Salt New York. And this is very, this is sparing. I use this sparingly. Some people do, but I don't use this all over my whole face. Even though it is technically a skin tint, I, you know, it, it's so sneaky that you can just blend it where you need it and then not, not put it where you don't kind of thing. And this is just a little higher coverage. So let me swatch them for you. And it's actually interesting because the Salt New York is stiffer when you touch it. And the balm powder is extremely slippy when you touch it. So here's the Salt New York and you can see it's just a more consistent kind of creamy looking pigment. And then this one actually, the, the balm powder looks like it's going to be really, really dewy, but then you spread it out and it goes quite matte. Do you see that? It's like a powder. So it's, it's less about what it looks like in the pan or right when you put it on and more about like how they wear. I think that Salt New York is a more comfortable wear for somebody who 
needs the hydration over the day and it'll just kind of sink into your skin imperceptibly like skincare. Whereas I feel like the longer I wear this, the worse it looks because my skin needs more hydration than that. And I was afraid to use like a really hydrating primer under it or something because it's my first day wearing it and I didn't know what it was gonna do. So in the future, that's just what I'll do. But they're very different. Ilia Serum Concealer versus Kosas Concealer, please. Um, I decluttered the Ilia because it's right in between the Thrive and the Kosas to me. And so in any case, I'm gonna either reach for the Thrive or reach for the Kosas. I don't really see in my collection a use for the Ilia because it's just, it's low coverage, but it doesn't blend into the skin quite as well or stay as hydrating as the Thrive Concealer does. And it doesn't have as high of coverage that's like creamy. And um, again, sort of self, setting, self-refreshing the way that the Kosas is. And the Kosas also has caffeine in it, it's great. Salt New York Cocoa versus the uh, Kierweiss Inner Glow. So that top one is the funky, funky shade from Kierweiss called Inner Glow, and the bottom one there is Cocoa. So they're just different colors. And obviously Inner Glow is quite uh, reflective. And when they blend out, you get more of that, you know, chocolatey terracotta thing by comparison with Coco. And you get more of like this, almost kind of a lilac shift from Inner Glow. It's just weird. And we'll do one more. We'll do one more because my camera's gonna die soon. <laughs> Ritual Defi Highlighter and Milk Bionic Highlighter, both recently reviewed by you. These are very, very different from one another. Let me, let me swatch them. So here's the milk. Here is what the Ritual Defi looks like. Mine's a little bit mangled on the inside, but this is Solaris. And here they are swatched on my hand. Solaris is going to have all sorts of ethereal shifts to it. It shifts kind of a rosy, beautiful, peachy kind of thing on the skin. And it is a balm that is unapologetic about being a balm. It, I'm sorry, it's a cream that's unapologetic about being a cream. It doesn't, it's not dewy. It's really beautiful. Like it still goes to kind of a powder finish, but it does not dry down, quote unquote. Like it doesn't have like the technology of like a wet to dry of any kind, but when it does spread out, it does go to like a really pretty, you know, a little bit more of a matte finish. And we have talked at length now about the finish on the Milk Makeup, which is dry. It's dry by now. And it just has sort of a tacky finish, but not a movable finish. And it's glycerin-y. It has that like very, very smoothed thing. So they're very, very different. If you want something that has that smooth kind of poreless look to it, go for the milk. If you're looking for something that's like a very, you know, catch the light, it, it, stunning, but also maybe, you know, a little bit supernatural looking, go for the Ritual Defi. And then someone did ask, I just wanted to say one thing here. Someone did ask, you know, if I'm if they're in the market for a luxury quad, should they go like Tom Ford or Dior or what? And my brain just said, go Charlotte Tilbury. And you guys know, I am not necessarily a Charlotte Tilbury stan, but if you're looking for, if you're in the market for a quad like they do, right? Tom Ford does or Dior does, that they're a little bit like more mature makeup. They look a little bit more sheer on the skin and they're meant to be more like every day, right? They're supposed to be kind of like your ideal four colors and then you can just kind of experiment within those, but it's something that you know that you can count on day after day after day kind of thing. Charlotte Tilbury's formulas lend themselves so beautifully to that. They are luxury formulas, but they're not crazy, crazy high pigment. This is Exaggerize and it's so beautiful. This is probably yeah, if I if I lost all of my makeup, this this is in the running for something that I would repurchase. Just because even though it doesn't, I don't talk about it very much on my channel. It's just because that's not the nature of the way that I interact with makeup in my life right now. If I were a you know few makeup items kind of owner, like this is such an incredibly practical, useful quad with super nuanced colors to it. And there are a gazillion of them. You want one that goes a little bit green. You want one that goes 15 shades of pink. There, she has probably 15 different pink ones. Gold ones, gray ones, uh, purple ones. Like there's just, they're, they're gorgeous. And the formulas are really pretty. I used to think that these were like so overpriced. They're like $53 when I bought this. It's probably gone up since then. Tom Ford though, $89. Dior, I don't even know. I don't even own one. But I, I think that for like that luxury preciousness, these 
are the happy medium of a really beautiful wearable sheer, you know, like a formula where you can get something really beautiful out of it that's easy to manipulate, but it doesn't just look like charcoal on your skin. It's all gray, the way that some of them can. And it's also, honestly, it's a little more pigment than the Tom Ford. <laughs> Tom Ford is like, hello? Are you there? It's me, Khaki. I thought I spent $89 on this. Where is it? You know what I mean? So um, I do feel like I can get a look, a complete look that I'm satisfied with, with this palette. Whereas like Tom Ford, I, I always end up having to pull something else out. And I own three of them. Idiot. Okay, my, my ISO is freaking out and my computer's about to die. So that is it for today's This or That. Don't worry guys, there will be more installments. I, I didn't even cover half the questions. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching, for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.